Do you ever wonder what happened to your friends from high school? I mean, you were so close. You laughed together, you cried together, you shared some of the best years of your lives together. And yet, somehow through life, you just lost touch. Now it's time to relive those moments once again. Introducing the podcast that takes you back in time to the place where it all began. This is Class Reunion. We're bringing you all the gossip, secrets, and scandals from your high school days that you won't want to miss. Join us as we catch up with old classmates and dive into the wildest stories from our high school days. From those legendary parties to the infamous cliques, we're spilling all the tea on who's who and what really went down. So grab a seat, turn your volume up, and get ready for a trip down memory lane. Class Reunion, the podcast that reunites us all. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Class Reunion. I have with me today someone that's going to be so interesting to speak to. I'm excited, Danielle McCombs. Welcome to Class Reunion. Thank you so much for having me here, Leanne. I'm so excited. We have had a pre-call about this topic because I kind of put a search out for wanting to do a spin on a Mother's Day special. And we are going to call this going to be interesting discussion. So buckle up. We're calling it the Unmother's Day special. And I did that because, you know, in Gen X era, it was very common that you were supposed to be married. If you weren't married, you were supposed to have children. Um, and then we kind of got hip later in that generation to acknowledge pet parents and I'm a dog mom, I'm a cat mom. So we kind of moved that way to celebrate people that didn't have children. And now we're just like opening the kimono and saying, listen, it's not always a decision that everybody chooses to make. So I'd like to separate those that unfortunately, for whatever reason, do have infertility issues. So we're not trying to talk about that group. That's a special group on its own. This is just women who have decided not to have children. And nowadays, you know, the world is everybody's oyster to have that decision. But back when we were growing up and we read the fairy tales and we had all of the Disney movies, you know, supposed to get married to your prince and have children, that's not always the case. So I met up with Danielle, who's a dynamo, and we're going to talk about that. But that decision and how it it transformed all the decisions thereafter. What was interesting is how we began the discussion because I was explaining class reunion and and Gen X and and when we were young. And you brought up a really interesting term and I looked it up. So share how you feel kind of in the middle and I'm going to read to the description because I looked it up. Yeah. So it's, I was born three weeks into 1980. So yeah. if you, I could be considered a millennial, I could be considered Gen X or an ex millennial, yes, which is something that, yes, that I, a friend of mine mentioned to me and I was like, oh, that's it. And so it's yes. kind of this like cusp generation. And I think it's generally like, I mean, the years change, right? But like 78 to 82, that there's Correct. this group of people who did not grow up with technology, Yep, kind of were left to their own devices in some way, like as many Gen X kids talk about. Yep. And and just grew up in a different time. But also then, you know, I didn't have a, I had a computer when I graduated from high school. So the internet yep. started when I was in high school. Yeah. But like, I didn't have an email address until I went to college. So, which I think was also just late. Most of my contemporaries did. My yep. parents are just, I have brothers and sisters who are older than me. And I was like the kid that, you know, wasn't on the technology part, you know, or that road, at least. Yeah, I was not. You are exactly right. And I, you know, you're also called the lucky generation. Oh, I did not. Because you were introduced to technology, just like you mentioned, but you weren't in the millennial cyberbullying, sexting, all of that stuff. And so... It's really called you're you're tenacious. You're still have like the Gen X entrepreneurial spirit of like you're not giving a hoot about a lot of people's opinions, but you also have the millennial direction of like you know new age thinking or, or just being more progressive in your thoughts. So you're like a hybrid. I love it. Yeah, I think I kind of get hopefully the both of be- the best of both. Right. But yeah, when I think of you know I don't have anything from my high school or college days were not put on the internet. That wasn't yes. an option. There wasn't, nobody had a 
camera in their pocket at all times. Like you yeah. carry, you did, you made a very conscious decision to carry your camera out for a night and then had to wait for the film to get developed to see pictures. So <laughs> flipping that thing, even if you had the Polaroid, you did this right. or, or you had the SIM card that you had to take somewhere. Right. Yeah. And then you also talked about, cause I said, well, what was your first job? And you immediately talked about babysitting. Yeah, I was 11 years old and <laughs> my neighbor hired us, hired me to watch her six week old, three year old, and a five year old I mean, at 11. I was 11. Wild. Yeah. That might, that might play into part of the reason why I don't have children either. Um, <laughs> but yeah, very young and just like, here, you, you got this. No problem. Yeah. Where and, when and, I think about it now, Watching children that age now makes me very nervous. Yes. But then I had no fear. It was like, oh, I could do this. But you know what I loved about those parents back in the day? They wanted to go out. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of it, because you have friends with kids. I have friends with kids. I Well, I had one too. And there's that paranoid feeling of like, I wonder if they're, I mean, I remember firing one of my first nannies because she left the crib down. I came home from dinner and my son was sleeping in the crib and the side was down. Honey, he was only a couple weeks old. I mean, where was he going to go? And I was like, she's never coming back. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, this woman had three grandchildren. She probably forgot, probably thought he's not going anywhere. Oh, right. And how we became such over-the-top parents, I have no idea. But that group of parents wanted to get the hell out of the house. Oh, yeah. Well, so I still know this family. They're still my parents' neighbors, and they're very good yeah. friends. With, we're very good friends. I know all of the kids... I've been to their weddings. I've, yes. you know, all of these things. And it's funny now looking back, realizing like, oh, they were just going out to bars. And then <laughs> depending depending on who was the designated driver on the way home was the one that took me home. And true, so when it was the dad, he would be like, get in the car and would drive down the street backwards. And yeah. when it was the mom, she would walk me home. And I just always remember being like, oh, I hope Michael takes me home tonight because then I don't have to walk. And like not realizing, not putting that into place at the time, like what that right. was. But right. now they like we joke about it now. Hilarious. And and I I was right next door, and he would walk me right next door. Yeah. But that walk on some nights was like I was afraid he was going to get lost. You know, we go across <laughs> the bushes, off the porch. It was like oh my gosh. But you know what? I remember also making good money. Mm hmm. I mean, I made five bucks an hour, which I guess is yeah, good money. I mean, yeah. and also when you're in seventh grade and you have to be home by nine o'clock, right. I would get dropped off at their house. Yeah. And then I would watch their kids. I would fall asleep on the couch and they would yeah. go out until two in the morning. So I don't know what the idea of like, and then they handed me 20 bucks at the end of the night. And it was like, I don't understand having a 12 year old sleep on your couch, how that was the answer. They all survived. I'm dying. <laughs> I am dying. And I just posted on my class reunion Facebook group about the love boat. It was like their anniversary. So I did the theme and just the song. So I don't know about you, but my my protocol for babysitting was the love boat, Fantasy Island, Saturday Night Live. And if they weren't home by the time Saturday Night Live ended, you know, I was going to be out. Showtime at the Apollo was on. Oh, I my gosh. That. that was. <laughs> well, I think even be, me being a little older, I had the national anthem. Oh, it, 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 yeah, they put that. That's how they sh shut off TV back in the day. They just all of a sudden you had the national anthem and then the TV went blank. So yeah. what happened for me was I because I'm an ex millennial. My the people I babysit for had a computer before the rest of my family did. So that was oh. like, oh, I can play on the computer. This is amazing. Yes. So you also went from, you know, the east side to the west side, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about the Crips. So tell me about your you growing up in New York versus where you are now. Yeah. So I grew up on Long Island um, in a very nice town called Oceanside. It was a great place to grow up. I mean, very, I would say pretty sheltered. Like if you lived in my town, you were either Jewish, Italian, or Irish. And that yep. was like, that's all I thought that everybody was. I didn't know that there was other people in the world. Um, it was one of those three things. Yeah. And it was, it was a great place to grow up near the beach. It was wonderful. And had, I was very lucky. I grew up with my grandparents lived with us too, which Aww. was a really wonderful and special thing that I realized how much that affected me. And that was like really wonderful. And yeah, so I grew up like just normal middle-class neighborhood, had an older brother who's 10 years older than me. My sister's six and a half years older than me. So also like was very Gen X influenced. 
Yeah. And that, that was what I was sure. music wise, a hundred percent. Like yeah. I, you know, that was, I would say like, you know, my brother had me at like four years old, like listening to Bruce Springsteen and all of that kind of thing that that was very much in the ether all around me. Yeah. I loved that. I, I was the youngest of four too. And I got to say, knowing my musical taste is so broad, I, I value that they played the records for me. Right. I mean, yeah. it was, it was awesome. It, it makes for a cooler kid, right? Because you just yeah. like know more. Yeah. And and you were, you know, all American upbringing, so to speak. Then you get this job interview and you say, I think I'm going to go out to California. Yeah. So I lived in, in Manhattan for, after I graduated college, I moved to Manhattan, lived there for 13 years. And, you know, my family was nearby, friends were all there. And I got a, an opportunity to move to San Francisco eight years ago and I took it and mm -hmm. it has been completely life-changing. I really, really love it out here, have adjusted well to California life, uh, made a lot of other big changes in my life as well, mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. my corporate career, started my own coaching practice also have a podcast of my own. And so just, I, if I look back to where life was, you know, eight, 10 years ago, it's totally different now. Were you in commercial real estate in, in New, okay. Yeah. New Jersey? In New York. Okay. Yeah. In New York. So that license is gone. Like that was a big decision so or can I, you? Well, so I worked in finance, so I never had my, I didn't have like my seller's license. I, I worked, um, I worked for a mortgage brokerage Okay. Um, that did commercial real estate. So I had, okay. I did have some license. I don't my New York license, but yeah, that has lapsed and expired. So big change and you love it. Tell me about, so the original job you didn't stay in because then you, you went into this full time. Walk me through making that decision. So I moved out here to work for a startup that was based in commercial real estate, but it was, I was sold the dream of yeah. being a part of an early stage startup and getting to um, get equity early in a company. And yeah. within a couple of years, they would IPO and I'd be a millionaire and not knowing anything about the startup world and also just wanting to take this opportunity to move, I did it. And spoiler alert, not a millionaire. And um, the startup did not, I mean, it's still around, but it did not start in the way that I was expecting it. So I was there for about three years and then I moved on to another job in commercial real estate uh, that I left about two and a half years ago. So definitely out here, that was, uh, you know, a big focus. And I think like a lot of people in the pandemic had some time to really, um, do some self-examination and decide what yeah. I really wanted to do. Yeah. And I hired a coach to, Oh, that part try I to help me. Know. Okay. Yeah. So I hired a coach to help me decide like what's next, what comes next. Right. And in working with him, I was like, I want to do what you do. Yeah. And that was how that started started my coaching career. Oh, very cool. I might talk to you offline about yeah. that because there's an idea I have. Um, going back to the startups, though, one thing I have to say, and I'm, I'm very, I don't mind sharing my mistakes, things I do and do not know. Mm -hmm. I, I did not know. I was two for two to ask who was funding, what their experience was. They tell you, oh, we have 10 million in funding or 50 million in funding. We have this and this and this. They share with you their personal goals. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they're real. They sold that up the river to somebody else who agreed to finance the company. And sometimes it's a childhood friend or a pool of people that have no experience in mine with software. So a lot of the companies that funded didn't even know anything about software or were from India, which is perfectly fine. There's a whole time change that, you know, people aren't available for to talk about things. And I just didn't ask, like there. Anybody, I'm just putting this out there. If you're going to do any kind of startup, you need to Google the top 50 questions that you need to be asking. And if they won't answer, that's a red flag. That's yeah. a run. And I will say that after being at this startup for a couple of years, I actually interviewed a, another one that was kind of similar. And I went yeah. in with very different questions. Yes. And very like, because it was just, I didn't know the world of startup. That's like its own entity, right? I knew the yeah. right real estate questions to ask, but I right. didn't know the right, how is your company funded? Who's making the decisions? Who were the people like, 
who is there one person that makes the decisions or is there a board that makes decisions and what am I comfortable with there? So yeah, that is definitely like, I learned a lot from that experience of mm -hmm. needing, there's a whole lot of different information you need to know when going into a startup. Yeah. And they're always going to tell you, we're going to grow, you know, 120% this year. Well, yeah, you're just going to head, you're going to have head count right. that in the long run, you're not gonna be able to pay for, and you're gonna have to lay off because nothing happened. Anyway, that's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole they, other podcast. Yes, <laughs> but it, it can be great. But man, when you get burnt a couple of times, you're like, I'm done, which is very cool. So right on your podcast website, it's the opposite of small talk podcast, which I think is awesome because you and I naturally spoke for about an hour before we even did this podcast. And it's taking small talk and expanding it to a deeper level. I was sharing with you that this class reunion is about going beyond the name tag, right? Just, you know, stop asking, how are you? How are the kids? Where do you live? Blah. Really dive in deeper. But right on the about page is the story of how this came about when it says it all started with a text message. Walk me through that because I mean, I love that you have it right on the website and I'm going to share the website. I'm going to share Danielle's coaching page. Y'all are going to see some great stuff. So Christy Ollinger is a friend of mine from college and she is my co-host. And in the summer of 2019, she sent me a text message. I remember exactly where I was. I was visiting my parents in New York and she sent me a text message that said, Hey, do you want to host a podcast with me? And my response was, about what? <laughs> this is not something that had entered my mind. It was not something that I, you know, was in my purview at all. And her response was, you spelled yes wrong. Isn't that and, awesome? I love that. Yeah. And so since then, I've had a podcast. So we just started because we were talking about a lot of really similar things whenever we would get together that were, you know, deeper conversations about our own personal development and the things that we were doing, the ways that we were making changes in our lives. And so we started just picking a topic and talking about it, which was fun. Mm -hmm. But then it got a lot more fun when we started interviewing people. And yeah. we joke sometimes that this is a very elaborate way for us to get personal coaching, <laughs> that we get to talk to experts and we get to ask them questions of you know what their exp expertise is in. And right. so... It's been a really amazing project that has changed the, you know, the direction of my life because I don't think I would have had the, even the idea or yeah. knowing that doing my own, starting my own coaching practice was even an option. Yeah. But I started talking to all these people that were coaches and, and started learning about them and what their lives look like. And that was um, really the impetus for really my entire life changing. And it's, and it's also the path that led you down to the freedom of decisions, right? Yes. That, which we're going to talk about. And just, you know, that, that letting go of that, I can do anything that I want for me and not feel bad about what path you're choosing outside of doctor, lawyer, commercial real estate, whatever it is, allows you to do it because you are your own entity and you can make these decisions. One of the things I thought was really cool that I want to do more of is you actually were traveling across the country and connected with somebody that you interviewed on the podcast. Like this is such an enormous world that I want everyone to listen to as just a way and means to expand your, your whole intellect, your mind, your other people's opinions, other people's way of life. I mean, it's been fantastic for me and you. Now I just need to travel more and see people. So talk about how you were out of the country. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, I was visiting friends um, in Florence and London and of past guest of the podcast was traveling with his wife through Italy and we yeah. connected over Facebook and I said, Hey, I'm in Florence. Where are you? And he said, I'll be there Monday. I said, great. And so we ended up meeting up and shared a bottle of wine and just got to meet each other in person. And it was just so wonderful because I do believe connections can be made over line online because in the pandemic, we didn't have a choice. And I also have done so much where I've met people and built these connections, but there is yeah. something to be said when you're like in person and, and get to, you know, get to see them. And then we had another guest who lived outside of London and she came into the city and we had breakfast together and just being able to connect with people in 3d, there yeah. is something that can't be replicated online. Right. And, and it's, you know, I, I'm interviewing high school friends, so a lot of us do run into each other, but there's something about a brand new connection this late in our lives that's invigorating. Mm -hmm. It's, 
it's it's just uh, I don't know. It sounds so stupid to say it's so fun, but it, it is. <laughs> it and really think, is. And I think that's something that like a lot of people don't expect, right? No, I think people expect like, okay, well, I have my I have my people, and that's it. Yeah. And I think that that is a big mistake if you shut yourself off to that because there's mm-hmm. so much opportunity, and there's I really my motto in life is like good people know good people. Yeah, and so it created this web of people, this network of people that I never necessarily expected, but, and podcasters honestly are like, they're really supportive of one another and really yes. collaborative. Like there's not a competition about it. No. And so it's just been so nice to connect with these people who want to support what you're doing, who want to help you in some way mm-hmm. and are just open to having these like deeper conversations. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so your coaching, I want to get into that a little bit and then we'll talk about our, our on Mother's Day part. But the coaching aspect, that's so broad. And I'm assuming it's one on one, correct? Mm-hmm. Can you share with me like how that's a customized approach or is it a general approach? Or I'd love to have the listeners know more about what you have to offer. Yeah, absolutely. I so I work with people one on one. I also I work within organizations and I also work with, you know, private clients that come directly oh, you to okay. me. Okay. Okay. So, but I work mainly one-on-one with people. And what it is, is a lot of times people come to me when A, they feel stuck. Mm-hmm. Stuck is the word that people use whenever mm-hmm. I'm like, what are, why are you here? I'm just stuck. Mm-hmm. And so when you're feeling as though you need to like shake things up a little bit or want to yeah. see beyond what you thought was possible yes. and, and working with people to say like, Hey, let's, let's just take down all the barriers, all the things that you think are holding you back, right? We all have these limiting beliefs. We all have these things that like, well, I would do this, but I can't, or I, you know, I can't because X, Y, Z. Well, let's, if we just took that away for a little bit and played, right? There's a part of it that's play. Let's Mm -hmm. just, let's just act this out, see what it is. And then also figuring out what, and from that can come a lot of ideas that you didn't even know were there. And I think I know that from my own journey as being coached was I didn't predict any of this. Like I, you know, I worked in corporate America for a really long time. That's what I thought was going to be the next 30 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And when I really sat down and gave myself the space to consider, is that what you want? And is that what you have to do? I was able to see like, Oh, there's all these other paths that I've never considered, mm-hmm. or I've I never even knew that they were paths. Mm-hmm. And so there's a part of just opening up your world in a different way, and then really examining like what is holding you back. What yeah. are the things that have been conditioned in your life because we all have them that have shown up as because when you were a kid it was something to keep you you know keep you safe, and yes. now it just shows up as a thing that you do all the time and you don't even know it's there. Yeah. And so how do we work through those? How do we figure out how do we identify them? And then how do we work on taking those down and and really allowing our true potential to come through? That's beautiful. That is really everything you said is so perfect and 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 one of the things that I also found a helpful statement is what can you talk about for a very long time without thinking? It's just something that you can talk about and it doesn't even matter if it's planting roses. Like what is something that when you get going, you just can't stop talking about mm-hmm. it? And I mean, that's what led me to class reunion. It's just, it's interesting to like, everyone's so worried to find another niche or find something so opposite of corporate America. You got to just, like you said, have fun, noodle around. So I love that. And I will share, share your, your coaching link. Um, and what this did is we talked about, you know, self decision making and things that you have the, the power to do that you thought weren't. Uh, you know, the, the path that we brought up or were brought up with, boy, I just stumbled through that. But we talked about, you know, the fairy tale when you're little. So early on, can you walk me through, this was not fertility issues. This was not um, anything but knowing yourself well enough at a time when everyone else was getting married and having children, that that wasn't something that you wanted to do and how you felt whole and accepted in that path. And it was a long path. It wasn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't wake up one day and be like, yep, this is it. I think for a long time, you know, the example that was given to me in media and the world and my Mm -hmm. family was Mm -hmm. you get married, you have kids, right? You buy a house, you live in the suburbs and you, you do the same thing that everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. 
And in my 20s and 30s, when all of my friends were getting married, I was single and I've been very single my whole life. And that was something that was really hard to understand. There was a part of me that I've grappled with that and have worked on that really hard Mm -hmm. of like, is there something wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Right? Why am I not being chosen? Like that was some hard work there. And what I've come to is that like, I didn't want to be chosen, right? I, if I wanted to, I could have, I could have found someone, I could have made that happen. And it just never felt like the thing I wanted. And anytime that I did start dating somebody or some, I I would be like, Ooh, this feels constricting or this doesn't feel right. Like it just, it's not my full self. And Mm -hmm. so it never, and I, I don't have a problem going places by myself. Like I, you know, I just traveled to Europe for two weeks, like, and met up with friends and did all these great things, but like got on that plane by myself and, you know, and that's just normal to me. Yeah. And not something that like, I prefer it actually. Cause then I don't have to talk to somebody next to me, um, on the plane. Right. So I just, I think it took a long time for me to come to terms of like, my life is going to look different than other people's. And that's okay. It's not, doesn't make me better or worse than anyone else. Right. It's a decision. Right. And along with that was the part of, I, you know, I don't think, you know, a marriage and a family and kids are for me either. And I think I knew that for a long time. I knew that being a mother wasn't something that I wanted, but whenever I would say it, I'd be met with, well, you'll change your mind. Or when you meet the right person. Yes. It's the noise I really wanted to talk to you about because there's the decision and you feeling comfortable and then it's knowing a response. And Mm -hmm. I always talk about like, you know, our toolkits were so lackluster back, back then. Like now I'm sure you've got the saying down pat, but at the time, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you'll never know a love until you have it. You don't know until you have it. It's undescribable. And then the funny thing is you and I spoke about everyone commiserates. So yes, there is beauty in having children. Yes, of course you're going to love your child, but it ends up being uh, kind of like this thing that you sit around and you navigate through and talk about like, oh, can you believe having children is, it it can be such a negative group hug sometimes. It's like, we're all supposed to sit around and talk about how hard it is, but that was your choice. Right. Right. And so there's sometimes where I find it really hard to listen to people because I'm like, I, you I hear it shows this, right? Like you, you didn't have to do that. And then like, I was literally just before this, we got on this call, I was talking to a friend from college who I haven't caught up with in a long time. And she almost, she said too, like, well, you know, that could change for you. Like I was talking about what we were going to talk about on this and yeah. also how it's given me freedom to do a lot of different things that I can start my own business because I don't have children to pay for, or I can go on vacation and I don't have, you know, I don't have these extra things. And that that was a choice, right? That that it's not poor Danielle. Oh, she never found a man. Like it's, mm-hmm. this is the choice that I have made very consciously. And mm-hmm. She, you know, when she said, she goes, oh, but that might change. And I was like, no, no, it, I don't think it will. I don't want it to. And I'm not saying if something I'm open to things changing, I'm not having children, but I'm open to, you know, meeting if somebody in my that, life, that has but children. it's going to look very different than mm-hmm. what everyone else did at yeah. 27, 28 years old when it was time to get married and then have a baby by the time you're 30 and then, you know, do all these things. Yes for better or worse, but it just, it's very interesting how people who are in that world too, I get it. Like, I, you know, that you might want other people to be with you. I don't know. Like, it's just a very, our challenges are different. Your favorite line that you said today that I'm going to remember is I didn't want to be chosen. I can't think of a more, that's it. Mic drop. What else is there to say? It's, it's just, it's your choice and you didn't want to be chosen. And I will now listen, I told you I'm a mother, but like, I'm so open to understanding the other shoe because in corporate America, for better or for worse, this is where I'm going to gain followers or lose them. (laughs) Um, I realize now how often I didn't use it as an excuse, but I was navigating juggling, which was supposedly my right as a woman, right. To have the, have 
family and kids, but you do have a lot more compassion and understanding if you have to leave early for this or you need to do this. Now, I'm sorry, I am now so aware of how I treated employees that didn't have that. What? Why am I saying you can work later or can you pick this up, this task? I, I just, I have parent-teacher conferences or I have this. It is amazing to me how that group of people were neglected and still are to some extent in corporate America. I, I, I just look at it so with a different lens and I'm like, that's crazy that a decision that an individual makes is corporate wide, something that requires or is, is allowed, you know, change. Yeah. And I think that like, I get it just like you should be at your kid's parent teacher conference but that doesn't mean that I need to work an extra two hours to make up for that. Right. And I think the other part of it is, and this is very much, I think, like being sold that you can have it all. Yeah. Is like, honestly, the worst thing I think that people were ever told. Like, yeah. women were ever told, like, you can have it all. Like, no, you can't. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. like, if you want to do it all well, you can't have it all. And that's yeah. okay. You shouldn't have to do it all perfectly either. But that... I think a lot of really very successful women are women who did not have children mm -hmm. and by choice, right? Mm -hmm. That saying like, you know, my career is the thing that's important to me or yeah. living this life is important to me. And I think it's, I think it's unfair to mothers too, to say like, yeah, you could, I, I think that is just, I think it's honestly, it's another way to like keep women trapped. Like you can do it all. And yeah. now you're going to be, feel, you're going to feel as though you're failing at every single thing that you do Yes, because you're going to miss a softball game or you're going to miss a meeting at work, Yes, but, but you can have it all. Like, I just think that's like, that's a whole other podcast episode too, I right? Know. Of like a way to like say, sure. And that, you know, well, unless and, you and, have and, a partner doing 50% of it, which well, isn't the norm. No, it's not. And, and, and your paycheck goes to childcare. Let's be honest. Right. I mean, you come, your net takeaway is, is crazy, but let's talk about relationships a little bit. And mm -hmm. cause we really could have two, a part two on this. I talked about, you know, how moms get together and talk about how tough it is and rightfully so. Again, I was one. So I'm just, I'm opening it up for people to listen to the other side of the world where, you know, if you're, if you're looking at a lens from somebody that hasn't had kids, how crazy we sound. Same with marriage. I remember being young, being married. I loved sports. I'm sports nut. And so we'd all get together at somebody's house for a football game that I really wanted to watch. The men went downstairs, the women stayed in the kitchen, and they bitched about their husbands. And it was, you know, what kind of Korean countertops or were marble, you know, tops are you doing or your cabinetry or what, what kind of, you know, dishwasher. I want the quiet new dishwasher. And I was like, wait a minute, I can't watch the football game. We're just supposed to sit up here and complain. I don't get that either. Mm -hmm. And so that's not always perfect either. It's like, I don't know, they want you to join this group mm -hmm. so that you all are on the same page, but it's not necessarily positive. Right. Yeah, and I go ahead. I mean, yeah, it, no, and I, we're not dissing people who are. I, I have wonderful marriages I look up to, but it's it's different when you're out of it and you're watching people negotiate well, and you know the, nego <laughs> the negotiation part is something yeah. that I realized. I think I mentioned this. I went on a, a road trip with some friends this summer. Yeah, um, and they're married, and we were like all together for a week. Mm -hmm. And at some point I was like, oh my God, your entire life is a negotiation. Yeah. And it's just something that I, as being a single person, right? Like I get up and I do what I want when I want. And there's a, a great freedom in that. And so it was just very funny to see that other side of that, number yeah. one. But I agree. Like I, if I am at a party or, and I would say most of my friends here in San Francisco, like mm -hmm. I have friends that are varied, right? Most of my friends do not have children, but I have friends who are single. I have friends who are married. I have friends who are in relationships. And, but when I was in a place where I was with friends who were married and had children, right? My friends from college or my friends from high school, I always ended up with wherever the guys were because yeah. of those conversations. Cause I was like, I don't want to talk about diaper cream and I don't like get me another beer and we can chat about like what the Yankees are doing. Right. That's always where I found myself. And so it was never, oh, oh I, funny. 
I, there was never that moment of like, oh, I wish there was somebody else here yeah. so that I would be in that other room. But I get it, right? Like, it's like you go into these very prescribed gender norms. Yes. And I don't, I don't know. I like, I, know. I think that that's, that's what's hard is, is that it's like, oh, well, everybody just does this. And there's some people who are happy doing that. I'm yeah, just not I, me. <laughs> but it's like, I want the coin to be equal. So yes, we, there's, there's a majority are married and have children. We know that statistically. And so there's this. Not anymore. Well, like, that's what it's oh, saying. Oh, maybe the majority. Right. It's changing. Yeah. But yeah. And, but there's that acceptance the non-married and non-child person supposed to have. I don't know that it was reversed. It's changing, like you're saying. But when you were in the in the height of it all, I don't know that it was reversed. It was more like you said, just wait, you never know, blah, blah, blah. It's even when you're my age where kids are getting married, now it's like, well, wait till you have grandchildren. Um, wait till you have more than one grandchild. Wait till, why don't you just say, wait till you die? Like, fast forward what you're getting to. Because I, and the business of children take care of their parents you know, we talked about, I had my grandmother, you had yours, but I mean, I don't know that those days are there anymore. I live in Florida. Everybody's in a assisted living by themselves. Nobody's down here watching their parents. Their mm-hmm. parents are, they always say, Florida, you go to die. Yeah. The kids aren't with them. You know right. what I mean? So it, it doesn't secure that path either that your children are going to take care of you, nor should they. Right. Yeah. And that's a question people ask me, like, what are you going to do when you get old? And I'm like, I don't know what everybody else does when they get old. Like, I right. I don't expect that there's going to be someone to take care of me. I don't think that that is the norm anymore, for better yeah. or worse. Like, yeah. I, you know, I just think that, like, it's not a guarantee just because you have kids that you have somebody who's going to take care of you forever. Yeah. And if that's the reason you're having kids, that's not great either. Right. You're in, I feel like that's not... I mean, when I was mixing highballs and, and cleaning the dinner table, I said to my mom one day, is this why you had me? Because I was there to do the dinner party. So there's some truth to that. But, you know, you said something very important, that tide is turning. And, you know, we can, as we grow older, always look at the other generations and maybe their work ethic or this or that. But the fact is they're disruptors. And I love that because we should be disrupting some of the norms that you and I grew up with. Not that they're good or bad. It's just there's other options. There's other paths to go down. And waiting to have children or deciding not to have children is just something I'm so comfortable not forcing on anyone because I know I'm divorced. And and I only had one child. I didn't have other, any other kids. So I also don't have more than one kid. To, you know, then, then you get the, oh, you only have the single kid syndrome. And he's an only child. You're never going to win in life. Right. There's just, it, it's just, so the point of this episode is to be like celebrating really kick-ass women who are happy with what they've done in their life, who have created ventures beyond what they thought was going to happen for them. And... And I think it's great. We talk about waiting for our children to be out of the house to rediscover ourselves. Danielle got a head start. I mean, that's the truth. And that yeah. should be celebrated. Like, I, I appreciate Mother's Day. I'm a mother. I love the holiday. But I like the, I like the un-Mother's Day recognition because I would like to every year it, celebrate somebody who's been out there on their own listening to the noise from everyone else saying, just wait, or this is, you know, you never know, and being successful and happy in their own footing. Like, that's a beautiful thing that I wanted to celebrate for you, Danielle. Well, thank you. And to know that it's not, you know, it's not that easy to come to that when there's so much noise. I feel like that is the thing that that's taken up a lot of my time is getting over that. And when you said, like, when people are, like, waiting for their kids to get out of school to figure, or, you know, get out of the house so they can figure out who they really are, yeah. like, I haven't had the distraction of being like, oh, I ha- I'm sleep deprived and I haven't slept in three years because I have all these kids. So I can't even think about who I am. Like, yeah. I've had the luxury of, like, I've got all this time and I get to figure out who I am and what I want. And the thing that I think is beautiful is that I know that's going to change, too. Yeah. And I think people should be right where you're saying people are waiting till you have a grandchildren. Well, yeah. go figure out, start your podcast and do what you want to do. And like, if a grandchild shows up, that's great. But like, right. that shouldn't be the only thing you're like sitting around waiting for like, maybe a baby will show up someday. Yeah. And that will be the thing that then is really what makes you whole. Right. Wait for that, Leanne. Right. 
Now, another thing, economics, we didn't talk about this on the phone and then I'll let you go. Cause like I said, we could talk for 75 hours here. <laughs> so do you also get the snide remarks of your money has been your money, right? I mean, there's also this like trophy that everyone wants to, and again, I, people I'm in this category, so it's not me. I'm talking about myself here. I'm looking back like as a retrospect of what I've said and done to people. And I could just die at some of the things I've said, you know, when you talk about, well, you don't have student loans or you don't have this, or you, uh, that noise of like, you don't understand how hard our lives are because your money is for you to spend however you want. It makes it sound selfish. Have you encountered that? Or is that just my perception? I would say a little bit, but not as much. I don't, I live in very expensive places, right? Like I lived in New York city and I moved to San Francisco. Like nobody here is (laughs) like, doesn't matter how much money you have. Like I'm not the envy of anyone. struggling to buy coffee. (laughs) Exactly. And so there's a part of that, but I did have the freedom to leave my job and start my own venture because I don't have the responsibility of anyone else. Yeah. And so there's a freedom in that. And there's a freedom in, I don't have to ask anybody like, Hey, can we, can I do this? And you know what? Sometimes it might be good to have a a check there, (laughs) but, but I think that like, I do, I just have the freedom to, to decide what my money goes to and it's not daycare. It's not diapers or college or whatever. And it gives me the freedom to live the way that I want, that I can live in San Francisco, right? That where if I had a kid, can't live here. It's yeah. Like not an option. Yeah. And and I do think that's sometimes a stopping gap too, is when you have children, you automatically, your list of no's as to why. I, I couldn't leave corporate America because my parents were like, you have a child, how irresponsible, you know, you where's your 401k? And, and now, although that all made sense at the time, do you think I really wanted to sell software for financial services? Like where was my desire to have my parents push me into something that I really liked? And I will say the reason why I also wanted you on is this is not trauma-based or anything. You had great parents that were supportive of all of your decisions. Your siblings are supportive of of your decision mm-hmm. to be the best aunt in the world. That's not, it's not based out of like having a horrible marriage that you were seeing that you didn't want any part of it. You grew up in Americana. Yeah. And I grew up with right. Great parents. I have six nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. I have my, my brother and sister took the path that everyone else did. And that was, I think that was the hardest part for me was to be like, but this, how could that be the wrong path for me? If that's what everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. And so it just took, I mean, and there's still days where you're like, mm, did I do the right thing? Like, right, maybe. And but I do know I've watched I've watched friends. I'm, you know, in their 40s, try to have kids. And I've watched that. I've been a part of that journey and watched that journey and knowing that that like in my soul, that that is not for me. Mm-hmm. And knowing that that doesn't define me as a good or bad person or right. Like, or that's that I'm missing a chip or something. Like, I don't think that that's, that's it. I think that I have a different, my life looks different than other people's, but I am very happy that I have the, I I had the privilege to decide that too. Life designed by Danielle. I will leave it there because that's a perfect way to end this podcast. And again, I just wanted to pay tribute to women who consciously made the decision, you know, not to have children or be married and just know that on this Mother's Day, you are celebrated for being you. And I'm so glad I got to meet you and I will share all of her information because she will make one hell of a coach for those of you that feel stuck. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Leanne. This was a pleasure. All right. See you on the next episode of Class Reunion, everybody. All right, friends. That's it for this episode of Class Reunion Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the show, write us a review, and share this podcast with a friend. Until next time.